So here's a question you need to think about. NFPA requires more than 70 tests for PPE to make sure you and I are protected. That's a lot of tests. You can go into it if you want, but what I want you to consider is this. How many tests do we have for them? How do you know it's too hot? How do you know that they're okay? You're gonna pencil the ceiling, you're gonna peel your glove back, you're gonna wait till your hood starts, your ears start to hurt on your hood or not wear a hood, you're gonna wait till your shoulders start hurting, the air in the bottle get hot, all those things. Do you think that's really reliable or empirically adequate? Because if you're feeling pain in some of the best PPE on the market, the victim is dying in their pajamas. They're not sleeping in Nomex Spider-Man pajamas. Matter of fact, if you look at most of the clothes we wear, they're flammable. That's why NFPA is a standard for your base garment. There's a reason you can't wear Under Armour stuff underneath your turnout gear. You should look at some of the burns firefighters have received for doing so. So penciling and using your senses to vary or gauge heat is a bad idea because penciling was disproven in three different research studies. Three. Okay. And those of us who were taught to peel our glove back or stick our hand up in the smoke, let me ask you this question. If you think that's a good idea for measuring thermal severity, you think it's a good idea to let your child touch a stove to see how hot it is? Because that's basically what we're teaching firefighters. Hey, stick your hand on that, see how hot it is. What happens when you stick your hand up in a 600 to 800 degree convective current? What just happened to your hand? I spent 26 weeks teaching recruits to keep their gear on and button it up and make sure everything's covered, all, covered up. And then we put them in a live fire and tell them to peel their gear back to use their body as a thermometer? I don't think that's gonna go over real well, okay? As I said, penciling was proved inadequate three times. U.S. Navy, University of Waterloo, Canada. We didn't believe either one of them, so UL had to disprove it in 2017 with the most profound statement that says, a short burst of water cannot tell you gas temperatures or how hot it is. When you're checking for a return, it does not work as previously been taught. If it does not rain back down, there's many variables why. No ceiling, you know, you, it could be too hot, could be over 212, but the majority of the fires you go in are going to be over 212. It's not giving you a temperature check. Okay, we're not compartment fire behavior trainers like they are overseas. They're surgically precise with, our, with their water. We are a binary methodology, all the way on, all the way off. Okay, and those of you who are worried about steaming the victim, that's been disproven numerous times and as recent as the UL impact of fire attack utilizing interior and exterior streams on firefighter safety and occupant survival. Page at 199, not my words, with no appreciable increase in moisture content at the one foot level, even after suppression, it is not possible the suppression is going to cause the victim further damage due to steam. Because if you can cook bacon on the floor, like in this picture, I think 212 degrees of steam is not your concern. Just my thoughts. So, in closing, when I'm flowing water, I want to flow with a purpose. I want to go straight to the target. The military thinks we're crazy because we go in buildings and we have no idea where we're going. When you conduct an interior attack, you should cool as you advance. You should know where your water is going in a race and bring the temperature down before you move forward. Flow and move, shut down and move. I don't care if you're OTZ in the end, but don't be a spray and pray or scream and shout and spray water all about. It's been proven over and over again, and yet we keep fighting the same fight. So which view do you think the citizens would rather have? Zero visibility, come find my victim or find my family member, or even with a cheap thermal imaging camera that's not designed for what we're doing here, I can still see where the heat is and possibly where the victim is. Which one would you want to have? Think about that. So. Brother Thomas is gonna to talk to you about search and how that can help you locate people 70% faster. I'm telling you, you can locate and put the fire out faster. You can control the environment. You can make it better for the victim, better for their property, better for you. It improves the tenability, makes everything better. So tell me why we're leaving it on the truck again. Tell me why we're not training on it. Tell me why we're not spending money on it when we've got million dollar fire trucks and we can't buy a $3,000 to $5,000 device but yet there's 80 inch TVs and brand new recliners in the station. Hmm. So if I do this, I am putting out the fire better, faster and fulfilling the mission. Yet we don't want to spend money on it and we don't want to do that because we want to keep doing this right here. I'm going to pencil a couple straight streams to the ceiling. No camera involved here. They're just being filmed. And then the, the coach is going to tell me that's good. Move forward. 
and I'm going to flow some water inside the doorway. And then I'm going to move forward again. And I'm going to leave nine to 1200 degrees of superheated surfaces behind me with a seven by three ventilation hole with tons of fuel inside of here. And we wonder why we keep getting our butt kicked. All it takes is looking both ways before we cross the street. Hit that semi with a big old bunch of water. Get rid of that heat. Get rid of the threat. Make it better. Erase the heat. Make it better for them, for their property, and for you. Questions?